全过程人民民主是社会主义民主政治的本质属性，是最广泛、最真实、最管用的民主。What is democracy? The word democracy comes from two Greek words: demos, meaning people, and kratos, meaning power. So democracy can be thought of as power of the people, a way of governing that depends on the will of the people. Democracy is one of mankind's greatest achievements, but for democracy to thrive and grow, it must also adapt. China practices the whole process people's democracy, which not only means that people engage in democratic elections, but they're also involved in consultations, decision making, management, and oversight. I'm Xu Qinduo. I have traveled to many parts of the world for news stories. I have seen democracy in the West and in the East. China practices a whole process people's democracy. This may raise eyebrows among Westerners who assume China's political system can in no way be democratic. But that is a big misunderstanding about China. If we compare Chinese democracy with, say, Western democracy, or in particular American democracy, the key difference is we focus far more on a substantial democracy, while they、uh, place more emphasis on procedural democracy. And、uh, in the West,、uh, at least in real practice, democracy is more or less equivalent to one person, one vote, universal suffrage plus multi-party system. But the Chinese approach is much more sophisticated, reflecting the Chinese cultural traditions. We focus far more on the purpose, objectives of democracy, especially good governance. And what the system can deliver to the people. To be more specific, whole process democracy encourages the expansion of democratic channels, and to diversify the forms of democracy so as to ensure that people can participate in the management of state, economic, cultural, and social affairs. It also ensures that people's congresses at all levels are formed through democratic elections. And guarantees that people's congresses and their standing committees lawfully exercise the powers of enacting laws, conducting oversight, making decisions, and appointing and removing officials. It improves the working mechanisms for drawing on public opinion and pooling the wisdom of the people. And these are not just words. When Chinese leaders say something, they mean it and take actions to turn that into reality. How does whole process people's democracy work in China? We traveled from remote villages to bustling cities to find the answer. This is Wu Xingyong, a grassroots cadre of Hochun Village in East China's Zhejiang Province. The village, with about 1,500 residents. Is undergoing a renewal project to reallocate and redesign its housing land to upgrade the villagers' living conditions and ramp up the growth of the rural economy. In China, the land use right in rural areas is free and can be passed on to descendants or heirs, making the housing land one of the most basic and important resources for Chinese farmers. Villagers pay a lot of attention to its progress. They are watching closely to see if the village leaders do this in a just manner. So, for this kind of big issue, we used to organize democratic consultation meetings to collect everyone's views and bring them to the village meetings to make decisions. 
Those who had sold their land use rights shouldn't be qualified again for future distribution of the housing land. The only way is to let them make economic compensation for the village. And a consultation meeting is convened every month to better tackle village affairs by inviting more to join in at the early stage. The meeting participants are selected according to the 1 plus 8 plus X system. 1 and 8 are fixed people, while X varies according to the issues discussed. So 1 stands for the party branch secretary, which is me. 8 includes all the different groups of people in the village. Views are heard and discussed, and then reflected in a draft decision that will be passed on to the village representatives' meeting, the highest level consultation meeting in a village for further discussion and voting. Deep in the night, the revised compensation scheme for the renewal project gets passed, with more than half the village representatives voting yes. What we've seen in the village of Ho Chen is actually a very important part of Chinese democratic system that is the consultative democracy at the grassroots level. China has explored different forms of democratic consultations based on different levels of decision-making process. The Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, or CPPCC, China's highest level advisory body, plays a vital role in China's consultative democracy. It encourages active participation in the deliberation and administration of state affairs, promoting the democratic and scientific decision-making process of the party and the state. The CPPCC has more than 3,200 organizations at four administrative levels, national, provincial, city, and county, with more than 600,000 CPPCC members from 34 areas, including eight other political parties and representatives from science and technology, literature and art, economics, sports, religion, and other areas. Few people in Western countries uh, want to acknowledge that uh, the Communist Party of China is not the only political party in China at all. In addition to the CPC, there are eight other democratic parties. I actually belong to one of them, and I'm very proud of my party affiliation. Further, there is a very large chamber of commerce uh, which caters to business owners, private business owners, etc. And then further, there is a larger group of people called people without political affiliations. I think for any political matter which eventually is put into execution as a policy, for example, they need to be vetted and eventually verified and endorsed and supported not only by the CPC members, but all the other eight democratic parties, as well as the Chamber of Commerce and the group which we call the people without party affiliations. And the democratic participation by the people of all walks of life in this exercise of political right actually covers all aspects of decision-making, as well as implementation, supervision, and eventually verification, you name it. And this is the only way why China has achieved such explosive productivity, efficiency, and economic and political transformation over a short period of only about 43 years. For example, Beijing proposed is going to build an international uh, uh, exchange center, but how to achieve that? Then the Beijing municipal government really comes to uh, the CPPCC members to, to form the concrete recommendations based on a half year of analysis, uh, uh, research, uh, consultations, site visit, you know, all those things. And then we put up the proposal to the Beijing municipal government. And I remember in uh, 2021, uh, China, Beijing International Service Expo, Beijing Bureau of Commerce uh, Chief actually come to announce that Beijing is going to add a new number of uh, uh, John Venture Hospital, going to open more international schools. There's a lot of, uh, you know, measures taken, uh, uh, you know, so you can see how uh, CPPCC can play an active role there. In China, public views matter, and not only in policymaking, but also in legislation. This is Nanmofang Township in Chaoyang District. 
This is our legislation liaison station. Usually, all deputies at the municipal, district, and township level will have training and exchanges at this liaison station. There are 43 community-level legislation liaison stations like this one in the Chaoyang district, the largest and the most populous urban area in Beijing. In China, when a draft law is released, it is subject to public review. I keep a close eye on the revised law and protection of rights and interests of women. The liaison station issued questionnaires for us to solicit residents' feedback. Online, questionnaires were released to community residents to solicit their feedback and reflect legislation demands at the grassroots level. Offline, we visited households to collect relevant suggestions. Altogether, there were 26 separate submissions. To reflect the wider society's will in lawmaking, people can participate in the drafting, research, revision, evaluation and post-assessment of draft laws. Legislative information offices are set to directly connect the grassroots interests of the public with the top legislative organ by listening to the public. Public views are heard and valued in China's lawmaking process. On October 30th, 2022, the newly revised law on the protection of rights and interests of women was deliberated and adopted. Over 700,000 comments were received. Making laws is a difficult and time-consuming process. For example, creating the e-commerce law took a total of five years to make, during which there were three rounds of soliciting public opinion and four deliberations. The final provisions placed more emphasis on consumer rights and increased the responsibilities and obligations of the e-commerce operators. The number of legislative information offices has also increased from only 4 in 2015 to 32 by January this year, covering all of the country. More than 15,000 suggestions have been made on 152 legislative drafts and plans through these offices. You are ordinary people to make comments, to make suggestions. And in the end, these suggestions will be incorporated into the legislation. I'll give you an example, very interesting. Uh, when the law on uh, family violence or against family violence was adopted, that draft was sent to the outreach office in Shanghai. And many people uh, raised uh, different views. And one view is uh, this draft has only uh, whatever provisions concerning uh, uh, husband against wives, but not the young against the elderly, against the parents or grandparents. That was also cases uh, of this nature. So in the end, when the law was uh, adopted finally, uh, this uh, particular part was revised. So uh, you involve people uh, into the process of making legislation. The Legislative Information Offices not only promote China's rule of law, but also practice whole process people's democracy by listening to the public and gathering wisdom of the people for efficient and high quality national legislation. The small grassroots Legislative Information Office has become a significant democratic platform. In November 1931, before the People's Republic of China was established, the first National People's Congress of the Soviet Republic of China was held in Rejin of Jiangxi Province. In caves along the northern Shanxi Plateau, they used soybeans to cast their votes to elect the cadres. In September 1954, the first session of the First National People's Congress was held, marking the official establishment of the People's Congress system as the fundamental political system in China. After decades of practice and exploration, China has been continually improving the People's Congress system. People exercising their voting rights is an important manifestation of people being the masters of the country, which is the essence of democracy. Among the nearly 3,000 deputies to the 14th NPC, 16.69% are workers and farmers. 
Besides the Communist Party, there are eight other political parties, which all have representation in the MPC. There is also a sizable proportion of delegates without any stated political affiliation. The 55 ethnic minorities hold 14.85% of NPC seats. NPC is really, as more jurisdiction, is, uh, is elected by uh, people in the different district, different township and society, uh, and, and all the government has to be assigned to a certain district to get elected. And then they are actually uh, uh, also uh, have a standing committee uh, for the NPC, and, uh, and then there's uh, every year they're going to pass uh, uh, dozens of laws and regulations. If the ministry or, or a member of uh, certain groups wants to pass in a law, they have to propose to NPC, and there's a debate among the standing committee members, and uh, and then the uh, you know there's hundreds of them, and then they have to uh, you know put it uh, for 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 discussion consultation with different groups. They, they also conduct hearings and uh, doing all those exercises, and finally they, they pass in the law. For many Westerners, democracy means one thing and one thing only, the right for each person to vote directly for their leaders. This explains why most Westerners naturally reject the idea that China has democracy. But what they don't understand is that Chinese people are deeply involved in the elections of leaders of various levels. Millions of urban and rural citizens do in fact directly vote for the representatives who govern their daily lives, who then make decisions that accurately reflect the needs and desires of the people from the most fundamental level. It's normal for more than 90% of Chinese voters to turn out in village and community elections all across China, which is much higher than in most Western democracies. There are now over 2.7 million deputies in people's congresses across the country. More than 1 billion registered voters have participated in county and township level elections. The ultimate goal of elections is to choose the virtuous and the capable who can solve today's most urgent problems and lead the country towards development. China's political system guarantees the rights of its people to elect their representatives. But more importantly, it guarantees that those representatives will be held accountable to the people. The CPC leadership regards democratic supervision by the people as one of the highest priorities. Article 3 of the Constitution of the People's Republic of China states all administrative, judicial, and procuratorial organs of the state are created by the People's Congresses to which they are responsible and under whose supervision they operate. Democratic supervision refers to consultative supervision carried out by means of opinions, suggestions, and criticism. China has implemented several channels of democratic supervision. Supervision uh, provided uh, two channels for people to, you know, to, to check, to check the account accountability or check the behavior of the official. First, uh, uh, like the media, you know, supervision by the media, you know, make the uh, political affair or the political, let's say, activity more transparent to uh, normal people. So the normal people started to know that, okay, well, this kind of official is now doing this kind of job. They are holding this conference and they are holding that event. Okay, so during this kind of transparency, they could get to know, they could get um, the detail of the political affair. And, uh, and this kind of uh, transparency also can be translated into a pressure. Uh, a, popular, a popular pressure or pressure from the people. So uh, the officials would not dare to do some kind of bad things. So that is the one kind of channel. The second channel is that uh, the supervision uh, by you know, uh, the political parties and the members of the consultative conferences, they can also provide some kind of uh, the uh, professional suggestion or professional advices. Let's again cite Huochun village in Zhejiang province as an example. In 2004, the villages there elected China's first village affairs supervision committee. After doing his own field research on democratic supervision in Wu Yi in 2005, Xi Jinping, who was at the time the secretary of the Zhejiang Provincial Committee of the CPC, confirmed that the new system, based on the separation of supervision from administration, conforms to the development orientation of grassroots democracy in China. Today, such committees cover over 500,000 administrative villages across China. Villagers can learn about village affairs without even leaving their homes. 
Ho Chun Village retains their traditional bulletin board where villagers can learn about the latest village affairs. But villagers can also make use of an app on their phones to keep track of what's going on in the village. In addition to the Village Affairs public column, more people can participate in the supervision, discussion, and negotiation of Village Affairs. They can also get involved through TV programs, a mobile app, and a WeChat mini program. Today, democratic supervision is part of everyone's daily life. People can monitor and supervise how authorities exercise power at any place and any time through many kinds of democratic channels and platforms. This is 12345 Beijing Citizens Hotline Service Center. It's been going on for more than 30 years since it was launched in 1987. When you call 12345 to file a complaint, an operator will put you through to the right department to talk to. In 2019, the hotline was upgraded with time-sensitive feedback services. In 2021, the mechanism was further improved and upgraded. In 2021, we implemented a working mechanism to solve one major issue per month. We selected the most common issues that people called about that were hard to solve. We dedicated special task forces to focus on these issues. In China, about 350 cities have 12345 hotlines. These hotlines provide first-hand information about public opinions and concerns that city officials could hardly get in other ways. Since the founding of New China, people have been expressing their opinions on state affairs, both large and small, and the party leadership has been relentlessly exploring appropriate, convenient, and diversified forms of supervision by the people. Anyone in China can walk up to a CPPCC member and say, yes, Gentlemen, or yes, madam, I want to ask you to reflect my concerns on particular issues. I want to raise my concern about corruption in certain quarters in China. I want to make sure that this particular policy can be revised or amended for better benefits. So the CPPCC members are not only working in their own personal capacities, they can be a funnel of information and feedback from all walks of life in China to the highest level of decision makers and the government and party officials. When asked how to escape the cycle of rising and falling, Mao Zedong responded, we have found a new path, that is democracy. He said that the only way for the government to not slack off is for the people to oversee the government. To satisfy the public need for information and the need to speak out is no easy task for a country of 1.4 billion people. Undeterred by this daunting task, the country's leadership has emphasized democratic supervision throughout the whole process of performing duties. The only litmus test of democracy is whether it can generate real benefits, make the country a better place to live, and make the lives of its people better. Democracy has always been cherished by China and its people, and will continue to evolve here with its own Chinese characteristics. In 2022, the collective income of Ho Chun, the village we visited, was more than 90 times higher than 18 years ago. We sell gift books and special cases for commemorative coins. Our online store is earning hundreds of thousands of yuan per year. The cafeteria for seniors is very good. More than 130 people eat here every day. We have a wonderful life, the village is in good shape, and we are all very happy. Ho Chin Village is a microcosm of rural China, showing all different types of people, where the elderly have lived for generations, the middle-aged have settled into village affairs, where young entrepreneurs have returned home to start businesses, and the newcomers who have decided to make the village their home. Economic progress rises with cultural and community progress, which is at the center of China's development. Over the past 10 years, from 2012 to 2022, China's economy has doubled in size. 
China has completely eliminated absolute poverty by lifting nearly 99 million people out of poverty. China has also created the largest number of internet and smartphone users in the world. It has built the world's largest social security system and healthcare system, covering more than 1.3 billion people. More than 10 million new jobs have been created each year for 15 consecutive years, a number equivalent to the population of a mid-sized country. More than 150 million people in China travel throughout the world every year. All people, men and women, young and old, any ethnicity, occupation or social level, all participate in the whole process of China's democracy. This underpins the miraculous development that China has been witnessing and reflects the guiding philosophy that the people are the masters of the country. In China, it is the people who hold the future of the country in their hands. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there. To see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you. All around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN. See the difference. The global economy as we know it sits at a critical juncture. An uncertain world facing unprecedented challenges. In times like these, solidarity, cooperation, and ensuring development are paramount. For over two decades, leaders from across the region and around the world have gathered at the Boao Forum for Asia to discuss the most pressing issues of our time and forge partnerships. Join CGTN as we bring you the latest insights interviews, and analysis from this year's event. Our special coverage begins on March 27th, only on CGTN.